Let's talk about Dracula by Bram Stoker. Without Dracula, Bram Stoker would be forgotten. As it is, he's one of the least known authors of one of the best known books. As a sickly child, he was often bedridden during his early years. His mother would tell him stories and he would read from his father's library. Some critics think that his traumatic experiences with doctors, especially bloodletting, influenced his writing. He began writing ghost stories in his childhood, and after college he worked as a civil servant for ten years, but wrote reviews for the theater as well, which led him to his work as a personal manager for and a manager for the Lyceum Theater in London. Through the theater he met many different people, including the Hungarian adventurer and professor Arminius Vanbury, who told stories of the vampires in Eastern Europe. Stoker began researching vampirism in more detail, although he would later claim that Dracula came to him in a nightmare following a particularly indulgent crab dinner. He might be shocked by some of the uh, criticism of Dracula calling it um, a more sexual tale because he himself was publicly prudish and once wrote an essay calling for the censorship of works that exploit sex impulses. After Dracula, he was never able to match the popularity of that novel. He twice tried to capitalize on the success with a stage adaptation and also a short story. His final novel, The Lair of the White Worm, tells the story of a young Austrian man whose neighbor is a vampiric monster with the ability to transform herself into a huge snake. One critic called that novel hilarious throughout. Without one line of intentional humor, it could still become a cult classic. Certainly reading Dracula these days is very relevant. CBS is about to launch a new series in which they tell the Dracula myth again um, using new characters set in the Victorian time. The legend takes new life. That starts this fall. Dracula is based on quite a bit of research that Bram Stoker did. Um, many of the things that he uses in his story tie back into the Romanian folklore and the folklore of Southeast Europe. Many of the different characteristics of the vampires, from the shimmering light to eating the blood of the humans or the animals to coupling them with bats as as a way to explain their um, relationship with different animals to the exercisers of vampires being eaten by wolves. Um, these are all things that Stoker saw in the mythology and the folklore of the times as he was researching. I thought this review from 1897, close to when the book was published, is very uh, revelatory. My favorite part I've put in bold, it says that we think his story would have been all the more effective if he had chosen an earlier period. Stoker does set Bra Dracula right in that time period of uh, the Victorian age and um, all of the technology that is coming at that time. So he uses the phonograph diaries, the typewriters, but the reviewer of the time is upset by that and thinks this story uh, feels more medieval and shouldn't be set in the modern time. Of course, reading this story in 2013, we feel like it was written historically, but for readers at the time, it was set in their present day. I made a list of how to be a vampire according to Bram Stoker's Dracula. Of course, anytime we read about Dracula or we read about different vampires in fiction, uh, they all have different characteristics, whether they glitter in the sun, um, whether they can be out in the daylight, all of that can change. So according to uh, Bram Stoker, Dracula has limited motion during the day, only consumes human blood, has to pass over water in certain ways, doesn't have a reflection in a mirror, has to sleep on soil from his own land, hence all those boxes of dirt being sent over on the ship. He has powers over certain animals, the weather, can turn others into vampires, an inhuman strength, the ability to scale walls like a lizard, and then um, repelled by garlic, the crucifix, um, the Eucharistic wafer, and can be killed by a wooden stake or by having the head cut off. Um, so that's kind of the Dracula vampire according to Bram Stoker. The novel has many symbolisms and themes, and um, being over 100 years old, literary critics have had a field day with this one for a while. Um, at the time, it was read as a straightforward horror novel when it first came out, but later people started looking at the Victorian times and the repressed sexuality there and seeing all the themes within Dracula, especially the female victims changing from chaste and innocent to being sexually aggressive when they become vampires. Um, the homoerotic elements between Dracula and Harker, 
um, and the erotic elements between a vampire and anyone else, really. Um, the drinking of the blood being a metaphor for sexual intercourse, and the stakes that kill the vampire women uh, being a symbol of a phallic symbol. Um, different critics have interpreted it from a wide variety of ways and also pointed out um, the killing of parents, the killing of infants, and some gender reversal as people become vampires. There's lots of ways and lots of things to discuss about this story. One other thing to discuss is the narrative style. Around the same time as Dracula, a little earlier, Wilkie Collins wrote the first detective novel, The Moonstone, in um, an exchange of letters to tell the story. Dracula takes that style even further. Instead of just using letters, they use diaries, but he also includes um, newspaper cuttings, doctor's reports, telegrams, memoranda, even transcribed accounts from a phonograph. And he uses Mina to gather together a lot of those things um, to share the story. That helps document the story and also give them some authenticity that those things are really happening, especially as the characters start to doubt what they're seeing and believing. Dracula has in part become so popular and never gone out of print as a book all of this time because of so many media adaptations. Plays and films um, have taken a lot of liberties with Dracula's characters. Um, you can see all of the different portrayals here from Max Schrenk, Bella Lugosi, John Carradine, Christopher Lee, Jack Palance, Frank Langella, Gary Oldman, and Leslie Nielsen are just some of the ways that the character of Dracula has been interpreted. If you'd like to read more classics, visit us online at Classics Made Modern, and you can always download the Classics Made Modern ebooks directly to your device, or of course, find a paper copy at the library.